What's going on, guys? It is Bernardo, and today is all about uh, Debian, yes, and installing WinBoat.app. Yes, what is it? I'm going to show you guys what it is, and I'm going to show you guys how to set it up. So let's get right into it. All right, so WinBoat.app. This is crazy, and I love this. This is free, open source. It's free. So the way that I see winboat.app, it's basically Fusion, right? If you've used Mac before and you use Fusion, which allows you to create virtual machines, right? Uh, and also Docker. So it's basically Docker and Fusion together. They made a baby. They got together, made a baby, and they created winboat.app. That's how I see it. That's the best that I can explain it. Now, there's going to be a lot of commands that I'm going to be pushing out. I'm not going to explain it to you right here. I do have a cheat sheet that I am able to provide it. Just shoot me a comment at the bottom of the video. Say, hey, Bernardo, give me, give me your cheat sheet. Within the cheat sheet, I basically explain all the commands that I'm going to show you today. Now, all these commands, I got them from the website. So it's not like, you know... I, you know, I did magic, black magic, and I got these commands out of my head. No, all I did was basically go to all the different websites that they provided, and I copy and paste all the commands into one cheat sheet. Made my life easy. So let's get right into it. So on the desktop of my Debian uh, machine, I open up the terminal, and I typed in screen fetch, and I hit enter. The reason why I did this is because I want to show you what version I am running and all the specs that I have for this to work properly. Now, I'm doing this within a virtual environment. If you watch this video at the very end, I'm gonna show you the physical machine with this installed, and I love it because I have all my Active Directory tools, a putty, and all that other crazy stuff on that machine. It's great, so hopefully you stay tuned at the very end. So, the first command that we're going to run would be the following. We're going to do a sudo app get update, hit enter, and provide your password, and then bam. Just make sure you're fully updated before you continue. Now, the next command that we are going to run would be the following, sudo app get install CA certificate with curl. Hit enter. Uh, do you want to continue? Hit Y on the keyboard and hit enter. Awesome. Now, the next command that we're going to do would be the following, sudo install and we're going to set permissions of 0755. We're going to do read, write, and execute to the owner and also provide 55, which would be, I think, rate, read and execute to groups and others. And we're also uh, creating a directory called key rings. Hit enter. Damn, I can't believe I remember that. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Next command that we're going to run would be the following. And we're basically uh, grabbing Docker's gpg keys and we're dropping it into the key rings folder and creating a docker.asc file hit enter excellent now next command that we're going to run would be the following sudo chmod and we're changing permissions for that particular file that we just created okay we're going to hit enter Excellent. Now, next command that we're going to run would be the following. It is an echo. And this is all, uh, this echo command is basically like adding the repository for the Docker stuff. So this is it right here. Again, I'm not going to go over it. If you want my cheat sheet, just hit me up at the description and say, hey, Bernardo, give us the cheat sheet so we could just copy and paste. And I, within my cheat sheet, I do have like comments because, you know, I'm old and I forget. So the comments help me out. And, the, and those are my notes. Yes, I take notes. So we're going to hit enter here. Excellent. Now, next command would be the following. Got to do a sudo app git update. Hit enter. Beautiful. Now, it is time for us to get the Docker plugins and the containers and all that other good stuff. So we're going to do one line for everything. And this is the line right here. You're going to be installing Docker CE, Docker CE CLI, the container. Uh, the Build X plugin for Docker, as well as the Docker Compose plugin. Hit enter here. Do you want to continue? You're going to type in Y and hit enter. It's going to do its thing. Excellent. Now, next command that we're going to do is we need to check the status of our Docker by running the following. sudo systemctl 
status Docker. Hit enter. Now, if everything works well, your Docker services should be active and running. If it does not, we need to run the following command. Just change status to start and just make sure that just Docker services is up and running. Now, open up a browser. I open up Firefox and we're going to type in the following URL. This is going to download the DEB uh, package for Docker Desktop. Hit enter. It's going to start downloading and it's done. Excellent. Let's head over to terminal. We're going to do a CD and download with a forward slash and hit enter. From here, we're going to run the following command to install our, you know, Docker desktop. Excellent. We're going to hit enter. Do you want to continue? We're going to hit Y on the keyboard and then hit enter. It's going to start doing its thing. Now, at the very bottom, you're going to get permission denied. Don't worry about that. Everything does work if you get a permission denied. It's weird that I got the permission denied, but it does work. Now, next command, and this is part of the instructions that they give you. We need to enter this, sudo group add docker. When you hit enter, you're going to get the following already exists. You know, that's part of the installation of Docker. So it adds it automatically, but Part of the instructions, it tells you to do it. Just follow the instructions. Don't skip things because when you skip things, things don't work properly. So make sure you follow it. Now, next command that we're going to do will be the following. Uh, user mod with a parameter of lowercase a and uppercase g, docker, dollar sign, user. Dollar sign, user is a variable of the current user that is logged into the machine. So I'm adding myself into the docker's group. Okay. so. Hit enter. Excellent. Now, next command that we need to do will be the following. We're going to do a system CTL enable docker dot services. We're going to enable it. So we're going to hit enter here. Beautiful. Now we need to enable one more service and that service would be the following. It is the container D dot services. This is also Docker. We're going to hit enter here. Excellent. Now, check those services. So we're going to run sudo system ctl status docker dot services and hit enter. Make sure it is running and it's active. Got it. Now we're going to do the same thing with container d dot services. Hit enter here. And again, it should be running. If it is not running, change the status to start. Okay. Now. Next command that we're going to run would be the following. We need to install flat pack, flat pack. Yeah. Hit enter. Done. Next command that we're going to run would be the following would be flat pack remote add and whatever information you get here. Now, the flat pack is not really part of the wind boat uh, instruction. I had to go off the scope to get this information. So, yeah. Again, I got my cheat sheet. If you want it, hit me up at the bottom. Hit enter here. You're going to get this prompt. Just enter your password and click on authenticate. Excellent. Now, the next command that we need to run would be the following. We need to install the free RDP. Now, free RDP, that utility, this program is needed for WinBoat to work properly. Uh, it actually uses this to remote into the Windows 11 machine that it creates. Oh, it creates a virtual machine, a Docker. It actually creates a Docker image, which is a container of Windows 11. It's crazy. It's really awesome. I, you know, I was really excited about the Wimbo when I was playing around with it. So we're going to type in this command. We're going to hit enter. You're going to get the following question. Do you want to install it? We're going to type in Y and hit enter. You're going to get the following question. So hit Y on the keyboard and then hit enter. It's going to prompt you this. So just enter your password and then click on authenticate and installation completed. Now open up your browser again and we're going to go into the following URL or following website. Yes, type that in. Finally, we're getting there. Hit enter. It takes you to this. Scroll down. Pick your flavor. For me, I picked the second one, which was Debian. And then click on download.deb. It's going to start downloading. Now, let's head over to the terminal, which for me, I was already inside the downloads folder. So hopefully you guys are following along and are inside that downloads folder.
So we are going to type in the following command. You know, we're going to install it. So hit enter. Uh, do you want to continue? Yes. Hit Y. Hit enter. Again, at the very bottom, it does give you permission denied, which is okay. It still works. I don't know why that happened, but again, it, it worked. So from here, we're going to open up, which I call within the Debian world, the launch pad. And there goes the new app, Winboat. Let's click on it. It launches up. Click next. Click on I agree. So what I did from here is I basically shut down the virtual machine. Once the machine was shut down, I went into the processor and I checked off virtualize Intel VT. Now for you, restart your machine and go inside BIOS and make sure Intel VT or virtualization technology, whatever is enabled. Again, we fixed those. Uh, we fixed the Docker group thing and the Demian running. We did that already. We just needed to reboot the machine for it to take. Once you do all that stuff and you start the machine, launch up Winboat again, and bam, the requirements, all green check marks. This is a good thing. Let's click next here to continue. We need to select a folder. So I'm going to click on select. Uh, right there on the upper right hand side, the folder with the plus sign, let's click on that. That is going to allow us to create a new folder. I'm going to give it the following name and I'm going to click on create. And let's click on select. Yes, folder was validated. Green check mark. Great. Let's click on next. Now, the flavor, I switched it to Windows 11 Enterprise. I clicked on select ISO file. I went into my downloads folder and I selected my, uh, you know, my Windows image. I clicked on select. I clicked on next. I provided a password and confirmed the password. And then I clicked next here. For the hardware configuration, I can't tell you what's best. It all depends on your resources. But for me, I left it as the default. It was it worked great within my virtual environment. So I click next here. Uh, home folder sharing, it gives you a big warning. It is up to you if you want to do that. But for me, I checked it off and I click next here. A nice little review and then click on install. Installation was completed successfully. You saw it uh, if you were like me and you clicked on that link where it says in your browser, it opened up the, the process and you saw everything. That was pretty awesome. I like that. Now, the only thing that we need to do is click on finish. Once you click finish, you get this nice uh, little window. It takes you straight to home. You know, it, it gives you an overview of the CPU, the RAM and the disk, which is pretty Pretty awesome. If you go into apps, automatically it gives you uh, a list of all the apps that are within the Windows, uh, I would say container because, you know, it's using Docker for its backend. At the back, you could close that window. You don't need it anymore. But from here, you could just do whatever. I typed in Notepad, which is the simplest program to start with. I clicked on Notepad and it opened up and that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. If you're still with me, let's go check out the physical machine that I did with this whole installation. So let's check that out now. Yeah, but physical machine, it's running uh, Debian. Woo. Let's open up a terminal real quick. I think I installed Green fetch on it. Did I? Yes, I did. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. Let's exit out of here. Let's go back here. And it's running. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that if you go into your launch pad and you click on Docker Desktop, it will destroy Winboat. Like if you click on it, it will stop all the services and nothing will work. Now, the reason that I know this is because I wanted to see the container. I wanted to see the image that Winboat created, right? Because it's using Docker as the backend. But in reality, it's not. It's just it's actually using its libraries and stuff to actually create the Windows environment, which is awesome. But within here, right, once all my apps loads up, I have installed like my 
remote server administrative tools like Active Directory and all that crazy stuff. I got 7-Zip, have my Active Directory sites. Got a lot of stuff, which is great. Uh, let's click on this. And again, I don't have it fully uh, joined to the domain as of yet. So a lot of these tools will not work properly. That's the reason why I'm getting errored out. I just need to, you know, hook it up into the domain. Once I get that Windows 11 environment hooked up to the domain, I'm able to see my DHCP server and all that good stuff. But look, it's launched. The problem is, is that it's not a part of the domain as of yet. But it's awesome. I love this. This application is great. It's free, open source. For now, it's free. But look, it works with no problem. And I got it on a physical machine, which is great.